What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Nurse Bass back with another video and in this video what I wanted to do is I kind of wanted to give you guys an example, uh, a, a real world example uh, of why it's so important whenever you're studying even very early on in prerequisites to study with the intention in mind to retain information as opposed to memorize it. This is going to be a good one. Let's dive into it. Are you listening? Nurse Bass. Beast mode. just give you guys an idea of why it's so important in order to study for the retention of information to then carry it forward with you. Now, it just makes sense, right? The information that you're studying now in prerequisites or in nursing school is going to be very important for whenever you either get into nursing school or whenever you get into the profession. The kind of information that you're learning now is the kind of information that's going to forever be applicable to your career and, uh, and, and the route that you're going. And this is not just applicable for nurses either, respiratory therapists, MDs, any kind of APPs. This is applicable across the board within healthcare. This takes me all the way back to uh, anatomy and physiology too, actually. So this was more so the physiology portion, and this was my very first semester of nursing school. Side note, whenever I was back in nursing school, I went to a program that allowed you to take prerequisites uh, in unison with your first semester of nursing school. And so I actually was able to take anatomy and physiology too, alongside my first fundamentals of nursing classes, along with pharmacology and things of that nature. So I'm sitting there in anatomy and physiology too, had a pretty fire professor actually. And one of the first questions that he, had, he asked was, why do we need oxygen? And it's a very, it was a very, you know, it's a good question, but it was the kind that, you know, just think about that right from the get go. Let me ask you, why does your body, why do, why do you need oxygen? Why? And you know, um, the thought crossed our minds as it did probably yours. It's like, well, we need oxygen because we need to breathe. We need to live, you know, our tissues need oxygen, this, that, and the third. It's like, yeah, but why? And this is a kind of a um, uh, chemical or cellular process that like predates anatomy and physiology, perhaps. And it goes all the way back to something called the Krebs cycle. Don't know if you remember it or not, but basically it's a cellular process by which our body takes in oxygen and then converts it into something called ATP or in the form of energy that our body can then use to basically sustain itself. So it's a it's a good question, right? It's an, it's an important question. Why do we need oxygen? It's not just as simple as, hey, we need to breathe and we, our tissues need oxygen. It's like, why? Okay. But fast forward, uh, maybe a semester or two later, I'm in nursing school. And we're beginning to like learn more in depth about blood pressure. Why, why is blood pressure important? Okay, well, what is blood pressure? Blood pressure is the amount of pressure maintained within your intravascular system that assists blood in being carried to your end organs, to your end tissues, right? Starts at the heart, contracting out of the LV, out into the aorta to then be distributed to the rest of the tissues in your body uh, via your arterial system. And um, yeah, we're, we're carrying oxygen rich blood to all the tissues of your body. So why does this come into important play? OK, well, what is you know, what are different things that can affect blood pressure? You know, a patient could be abnormally hypertensive or abnormally hypotensive in the instance of that a patient is hypertensive. They come in in a hypertensive crisis, systolics over 200s. We see it all the time in the cardiac ICU. Um, you know, and, and what is a side effect that can occur from acutely hypertensive emergencies? You know, patients can stroke. Why can a patient stroke? Why does a patient stroke if they have way too high of a blood pressure? So what you want to do is you want to maybe uh, visualize in your mind. So this is a normal blood vessel. Okay, and this is a normal homeostatic blood vessel. This is the size and diameter you can think of it. Think of it, this is the diameter of the blood vessel intravascularly that is allowing a nice homeostatic amount of blood to be delivered to the end organs just right and everything is working perfect now in a patient who's got a systolics in the 200 this vessel is so extremely clamped that there's like hardly any room at all for blood to travel through so as the intralumen or whatever you want to however you want to word it as the lumen becomes much more narrow the amount of blood that can be pumped through is so much less and so what happens you have less blood reaching the end organs i.e the brain in this particular example now a patient has an ischemic stroke. There's just not enough, enough, you know, <laughs> real estate for blood to be pumped through. And so therefore the brain, the, the brain acutely loses blood uh, flow. On the other hand, in the patient who is hypotensive, right? So this is super duper hypertensive. Now this is normal. We're getting just enough blood like we need to homeostatic. Now a patient who is hypotensive, that intra, that lumen has become so dilated that now, although our LV is possibly functioning properly and we're pumping blood out of the heart to the aorta, 
through the arterial system. This arterial system is now super dilated. I mean, blood would just kind of be pouring through, right? This would be like blood just being poured through a vessel, and it's there's there's no there's not enough pressure for it to reach the end organs. They're in a state of shock. But now, what's happening as a byproduct of this either hypertensive or hypo? of emergency what's going on here okay well in both situations we've kind of um you know alluded to the fact that whether you're too hypertensive or too hypotensive at the end of the day the end organs are not getting perfused you know this is when you see acute kidney injuries right kidneys not getting enough blood creatinine starts climbing through the roof gfr starts dropping through the tank and so what occurs what usually occurs in these instances when patients are not getting enough end organ perfusion is this dates back to the Krebs cycle. We, you were sitting here in a patient's room right now in an ICU taking care of a patient who was on multiple vasopressors to try and keep their blood pressure up because they're in a state of shock. They're super vasodilated. Their end organs aren't getting perfused. I'm sitting here looking at this patient and you will be too. We're sitting here looking at this patient in this room, right? And we're sitting here looking at him and we're thinking, why the heck is there lactic acid going up through the roof? Well, now lactic acid is another conversation to have, but it's it's a, it's a byproduct of patients who are severely hypovolemic or, or hypoperfused, and they're not getting enough oxygenation to the tissues. Now, how does this come into play? Okay, well, we're sitting here in this room looking at this patient right now, but I want you to go back, way back before you passed the NCLEX and you were in nursing school, and heck, even back before you took your first fundamentals of nursing, nursing class, back before you maybe even took AMP. All the way back to that fucking Krebs cycle. Now, this is why it's so important to study everything that you learn now for the retention of information as if one day patient's life will be in your hands. This is why. Hey guys, real quick. I just wanted to let you all know about this amazing company called Nursing.com, whose sole purpose is to help prepare aspiring and new nurses for success in this rewarding career. Links down below. They have four brand new academies available for whatever stage of the grind you're in. The Pre-Nursing Academy for those aspiring. The Nursing Student Academy for those in the trenches. The absolutely stellar NCLEX Prep Academy with over 99% pass rate and a program designed to help the new grad nurse navigate this new and intimidating profession. Just pick the path that's right for you. But if funds are tight, don't worry because nursing.com has a ton of other free resources available to you as well. One day, patient lives will be in your hands. Study like it. Links are in the description. Love you guys. Grind on. All the way back to this Krebs cycle. Why does our body need oxygen? It's not because we need to breathe. We need oxygen in order to produce ATP to provide energy for our body to sustain this organism, this host. If you don't have enough oxygenation to your tissues, in the state of a hypertensive or hypotensive emergency, you're not getting enough oxygen, which is carried by red blood cells. We're not, we're hypoperfused. Our end organs are hypoperfused because they're not getting enough blood. Therefore, they're not getting enough oxygen. And if they're not getting enough oxygen, let's go back to that Krebs cycle. In a nice homeostatic uh, world within our body, we're getting enough oxygen, we're producing ATP, life is good. But what, what happens whenever you don't have enough oxygen to your tissues? is you flip over to an anaerobic process of, of energy production. And one of the, and I'm not going to go into the details of all of that, but one of the byproducts of anaerobic metabolism, anaerobic energy production is the production of lactic acid. And one of the examples that gets used whenever the Krebs cycle is being taught, and you're talking about anaerobic metabolism or processes like that is the the jogger who's who's out there just getting it right they're they're running a 5k or whatever hours into it you're getting enough oxygen in but you're not necessarily getting enough in order to meet the requirements necessary the energy requirements and so you kind of your body converts over into a state of anaerobic metabolism and this byproduct lactic acid gets produced it gets produced and stored within the muscles this is why the next day after you do like a heavy duty workout or something like that your muscles are sore as hell you're very fatigued it was all that buildup of lactic acid same concept is applicable in patients in, who are critically ill in hyper or hypotensive emergencies. Their end organs are not getting perfused with oxygen rich blood enough to meet the energy requirements to produce ATP. So they convert over to a state of anaerobic metabolism to produce the same energy. Same as in that runner, the byproduct of anaerobic metabolism is lactic acid. You get lactic acid build up in a patient who already has pre-existing comorbidities and are already in a state of, you know, for example, hypotense, you know, shock. Lactic acidosis, this is, could go down another rabbit hole, but acidosis back to like our AB, our study of ABGs that I've mentioned multiple times here on this channel. There's a lot of intertwining concepts, right? 
acid base balances you know whenever you're in a state of lactic acidosis you can consider that your blood ph is in a state of acidosis you're below 7.35 what happens whenever you're in a state of acidosis within your your blood is in a state of acidosis <clears throat> further further vasodilation further vasodilation so a patient who's already in a state of shock who's going through anaerobic metabolic metabolic processes to produce energy and as a byproduct are creating lactic acid acid are now going into a state of lactic acidosis and further compounding the vasodilatory effects so i know that, that was a lot of information but basically what i'm trying to say is okay your anybody who wants to go into critical care or anything any any avenue you want to do in nursing or respiratory therapy or anything this is just a small example of why it's so important to everything everything that you learn along your academic journey into your profession it's so important to study with the objective in mind retain information Retention, it's so important. Again, I say, one day patient lives will be in your hands, baby. Are you studying like it? Ask yourself. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. We're putting out content every week. Motivate, uplift, and inspire you to be the best damn nurse you can be. And that's all that I got for you guys. Hit that like button if you haven't. You know, that helps with the algorithm. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Boy, Brad, I'll catch you then. Peace.